Well, good morning and thank you for coming to today's uh, announcement. I want to give a special accolades to Alderman John Fulgenzi for hosting us in uh, you know, the North End and Schnooks. And we really appreciate the hospitality the North End always provides. And I can speak from the heart because that's where my parents grew up. And uh, you know, with time, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And in today's society, you know, with the ever-changing environment that we're in, uh, it really takes me back to when I grew up as a teenager. And it was uh, during the 70s, we had inflation, everything started going up with pricing, things of that nature. And uh, you know, I learned from that history from probably the uh, most important economist in my life, and that was my mother. You know, I'm uh, number six of 13 children, and she really knew how to squeeze a penny. And uh, back in those days, uh, she actually participated in what I would consider a movement of today, and that was boycotting the price of meat. And even though, you know, we had squalling kids, myself included, that complained about it, she uh, understood the importance of creating that awareness, not just for our family, but how it impacted all families. And what a dollar means to each and every family, especially when you're with tight budgets moving forward. So you fast forward to today, and I'm married now with my own children, but I still have an economist in my life. That's my wife. She's a coupon clipper, just like my mother was, and knows the importance of a dollar, especially at home. And uh, we really appreciate that level of awareness and what we need to embrace and face the challenges that we're facing today. So that's why it's important that we uh, came together today and I appreciate uh, Governor Pritzker in uh, bringing us all together and hopefully moving us in a positive direction of awareness so we all can benefit towards the future. So uh, with that, I'll introduce Governor Pritzker. Governor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And I have to say your, your mother I, I has to be a saint, 13 children. Wow. <laughs> Uh, and terrific and and she must she must have been very proud of you um, so thank you again thanks for welcoming uh, us to Springfield and um, thank you for your leadership here uh, thank you to Mayor Julie Moore Wolf who's uh, standing behind me for your tremendous work advancing the interests of the people of Decatur I also want to welcome uh, IML president Brad Cole, who's with us, Steve Powell, the local 881 UFCW president and UFCW international vice president, uh, and an incredible partner of mine in the General Assembly, D Senator Doris Turner, who fights every day really hard for the people of her district and really pleased and, and proud to have you here. Um, and of course, I want to thank our hosts uh, who are here from Schnooks, um, Kevin Haney and Ryan Maddox and Jill Falk. Thank you for welcoming us and allowing us to interrupt the flow uh, today. Uh, Schnucks is a Midwest brand that I think everybody knows. It's Midwest through and through, uh, employing thousands of workers here in Illinois and of course around the entire region. Uh, thanks for all that you do for Springfield families. Uh, I'm here today to talk about something that we can do to bring a little relief to the families who come through these grocery store aisles every day. Anyone shopping for groceries right now can tell you that it feels like a different experience than it did a year ago. That's not a Springfield problem alone, it's a global inflation problem. And it's true across nearly every aspect of daily life. So here in Illinois, I'm working with my partners in the General Assembly to give working families a break at the checkout counter. We're going to put $360 million back in the pockets of Illinois residents by cutting the state tax on groceries this coming fiscal year. This is another in a series of supports that I've fought for to help working families address the kitchen table issues, especially as we recover from this pandemic, like rent relief and mortgage assistance and bringing down the cost of childcare, uh, lowering your grocery bill helps families get by. Eliminating the grocery tax for a year helps make ends meet when people need it most. And that's why I proposed uh, it as just one aspect of my $1 billion Illinois Family Relief Plan. 
We'll also freeze the gas tax this year, putting $135 million back in people's pockets and bringing immediate relief at the gas pump. And we're providing crucial help to homeowners through a new property tax rebate, giving up to 2 million families a tax break of up to $300. I came into office with a promise to do what's right for working families, and as rising prices squeeze the pocketbooks of residents all across the nation, that mission has truly never been more important. Whether it's supply chain issues or global oil prices, we can't pick the ways that the pandemic affects our lives. But what government must do is soften the impact in the ways that we can. So thank you, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to a real fighter for working families here in Springfield and across our entire district and the state, Senator Doris Turner. Senator. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, wow. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, I'm incredibly happy to be here, and uh, like Mayor Langfelder and Alderman Fulgenzi, who I sat next to for several years, uh, I'm really proud of my North End roots, and I do most of my shopping at this Snooks. So it really gives me a lot of pride to be here talking about providing some much-needed relief to families. We have all suffered through a global pandemic that has significantly impacted us, impacted us all, and on top of that, the worst snowstorm in many years. So yes, we're all ready for some good news. So thank you, Governor, for bringing that good news today. Um, groceries is not something you can remove from your budget. And unfortunately, it's becoming a larger strain on everyone's budget. Food insecurity is creeping into middle-class households and everyone is beginning to feel the strain. That is why the freeze on the state's tax on groceries which is actually, I believe, one of the most regressive taxes, is something that everyone can see at the checkout counter and feel in their bank account. Our state is experiencing a significant surplus this year, uh, and a lot of that credit can be given to uh, Governor Prisker and Democratic leadership with the way that they have really uh, gone about tackling our budget problems. And this gives us a real opportunity to provide help to those who need it most and I think everyone who finds himself at a checkout counter will agree this is a great focal point. The average family in Illinois spends approximately $1,000 a month on groceries. And this pause on the grocery tax is a real money that will give Illinois families a much needed break during this inflationatory moment. This pause, along with the other tax measures that Governor Prisker is proposing, will certainly help ease the strain on millions of families in Illinois and those such as myself who spend a lot of time at that checkout counter putting in that debit card. So with that, I would invite Mayor uh, Julie Moore Wolf to the podium. Thank you, Senator. And I'm, I'm not moving in on my good friend, uh, Mayor Langfelder's territory. I'm here actually today as the serving as the president of the Illinois Municipal League. And I want to thank Governor Pritzker for all he has done to be a partner with mayors across the state of Illinois. And one thing about this proposal to help families across the state um, with, with cutting back on this tax, he didn't kick it back to cities. And he sought to really hold cities harmless from the burden of what we would be missing from this tax. So it, it is helpful to us that unlike many administrations in the past, a uh, good idea in Springfield sometimes hurts the cities across our state and the taxpayers in those communities. So on behalf of the cities of Illinois, I want to thank Governor Pritzker uh, for making this um, not hurt in our budgets and, and our pocketbooks. So thank you very much. And I will now turn it over to Steve Powell. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. I'm privileged to be here with uh, both mayors, the Senator, uh, Brad Cole, and especially Governor Pritzker. From day one when he took office, working families, working men and women were forefront in his administration. If it wasn't the increase in the minimum wage that he was able to secure for millions of people throughout the state, when the pandemic started, it was his office working with us to ensure that my members in stores like this across the state of Illinois and working with our partners like Schnucks had the protection of the COVID virus. And this is just another latest example 
of suspending the 1% tax to help working families across the state. So I want to thank Governor Pritzker for his leadership and as for his foresight, and we'll be there to work right alongside him. Thank you very much. And at this point, I'd like to call back uh, Governor Pritzker to the podium. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Is the first lady okay with store brands? Sure. Store brands or, yeah, or uh, better known brands, but, you know, as long as you're fulfilling your needs at home. Governor, why not, as Senator Turner says, most regressive tax, why not, as a progressive, why not eliminate the sales tax in the well, as you know, the, the reason that we're able to do any of these tax uh, relievers, uh, this Illinois tax relief plan, is because we're able to balance the budget because, uh, frankly, there's been uh, not only an uptick in revenue, but also we've restrained spending. And so the result of that is that with a surplus, we can contemplate what would you do, what could you do. This is one year of relief in a moment when you're seeing a lot of inflation. Would we like to see more tax relief and longer tax relief? Of course. And as you know, there are other aspects to this relief plan than the grocery tax, including $300, up to $300 for property taxpayers uh, as relief on their property taxes. So uh, I hope that there is more that we can do, but again, you've got to do it within your budget to make Make sure that you're not overspending uh, so that we don't get back in a situation that we were in in years past where we had regular deficits. No. No, we wouldn't look at price controls. Um, but uh, no doubt, I don't disagree with you that as much relief as we can provide, we should try to provide. Uh, so so just, just to be clear, this is only one aspect of the plan, as you know, and we're looking uh, at the other things that people have proposed for things that we might do in next year's budget. So I, I think there's, there's a lot to contemplate here, but I'm very pleased with bringing down some of the costs that are burdening families, including grocery taxes, gas taxes, and property taxes. Thank you. How are utilities shut off households in December? Why won't you issue an executive order? How are utilities shut off households in December? Why won't you issue an executive order? We'll answer those in a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much. How are utilities shut off households in December? We heard you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are utilities shut off people in December? Sorry, so the conclusion of your question, sorry. Why won't you issue an executive order? The IML, sorry. Yeah, so once again, we're, we are focused on... Why won't you issue an executive order? Thank you very much. Right to free speech. I'm not sure that's going to stop him. Um, I have answered this many times. As you know, we've provided tremendous amount of utility relief across the state. Indeed, we had in place, as we did with evictions, right, a moratorium on utilities uh, that we worked out with the utility providers. Uh, and so I'm pleased that we're able now to bring people current. We've been able to provide lots of continuing relief for utility bills for, for uh, families across the state. And we'll continue to do that. We have more dollars um, that we are have not only in the current budget for this fiscal year, but also for the next year. Sorry, I do want to answer the question that Jerry, yeah, 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 is asking for LGDF increase. No, no disconnect. Again, look, as you know, we haven't solved every problem in the state budget, but what we have done is been very responsible with the resources that we have this year. We're paying off debt, bringing down our interest costs. We're paying down our bill backlog to nearly nothing. Uh, we have paid off long-standing debts like College Illinois, uh, $230 million that's been just sitting there on the books forever. I whittled it away in my first year in office. Now we're taking it down altogether. So there's an awful lot that we're doing in this budget, and we will continue to attempt to address the needs of, of uh, not only our local governments, but making sure that we're addressing LGDF in the budget. Governor, I know you're looking at 
you have the hospitalization data yeah. in terms of when to ease back the mask mandate. Yes. A lot of people are looking at those numbers now, and we're at some of the lowest since December. You know, 2,600 hospitalized right now. Yeah. Where should those metrics be before that happens? And another part of this, people want to know when the mask mandate is moved back. Will the same happen for schools? Or will students and staff still have to wear masks? So I'm the first person that wants to, you know, make sure that we're removing mitigations when we can to keep people safe and healthy. As you know, I've been following the hospitalization numbers. More importantly, our doctors, our scientists, the people who work for state and outside the state where we've got some of the great global healthcare institutions right here in Illinois uh, advising me. And, uh, and we're all very pleased with where the numbers are going and assuming that they are continuing in the right direction. I think I've said over the last few press conferences that I really believe that you know we ought to be looking seriously at how to ratchet that back. Um, I think we're gonna be making an announcements very soon about that and uh, but again I'm pl very pleased people look we've gotten here because people wore their masks we've gotten here because people got vaccinated we have the highest vaccination rate in the Midwest uh, we've gotten here because people have been responsible in Illinois and so it's a tremendous uh, desire of mine to do what we did last summer which is you know take masks off uh, and see if we can't get through this now that we have treatments, widespread vaccinations, uh, testing available, uh, and we all know to wear a mask when things get more difficult and there may be another variant. Well, why 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 those those Sorry, Mike, go ahead. Why and those cards to yourself, though, because if other people know what the metrics are, you can have a team working for it home. No one knows what your plan is. Oh, we, we've all been, listen, we've all been watching. Again, you, you have to take into account that I think you heard there's a sub-variant that's been going on of Omicron. Every other state in the country has said what their plan is to what the mask mandate besides Illinois. Where's the plan? I'm explaining to you that we've been watching this very closely and are very close to making announcements. So you'll be hearing about that very shortly. But what science, but what science do other states have that you don't? Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. About the schools. Once the mask mandate moves back, will yep. schools still have to have them? Well, there again, we're putting a plan together. We've got you know our IDPH doctors that are working on this. Uh, as you know, the challenge in schools, just to remind you, is that because it's such a central focus of communities, and literally sometimes thousands of people are interacting in a school in a single day in one location, parents, grandparents, teachers, staff, kids, and then they spread out in the community, not during, not just during the afternoon when school lets out, but also on the weekends. And so we got to be very careful about how we remove those mask mandates and also uh, making sure that the schools are doing what's responsible. They have the testing available going forward uh, that, that they know when they should be thinking about at the local level, when they should be putting masks back on, when there are outbreaks and so on. So that's all, I think, in the careful planning process and we'll be making announcements. Yeah, about I know you keep repeating this American Community Survey data that turns out not to have been true, but it wasn't true. The fact is, no, we did. 18, over 10 years, we lost 18,000 people. That's correct. That's correct. But, but you were implying that there was the much greater population loss. There wasn't. This is a problem. I, I Listen, I was governor for one of those years until the census. Uh, there were nine years before me. I, you know, I can't tell you which years were up and down, but, you know, clearly we lost 18,000 over 10 years. Uh, I don't, that's not the right direction. Uh, it's one of the reasons I just came from ISU where we were talking about the investments that we've made in higher education because much of the reason that we lose population is that people who graduate high school, want to go to college, choose to go to college somewhere else because they can't afford to go to college in Illinois. We're making it affordable. It's actually less expensive now to go to college in Illinois than it was in for many years before I became governor and particularly when I became governor it was something I focused on increased map grants increased support for our institutions increased FAFSA filings so that people could get Pell grants so they could stay here in Illinois and go to school last summer you said last summer gas prices were 320 and you said that it was time for me to drive and that um, you like that, 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 that it, was, it was great because I got to say roll REO Speedwagon after all yeah. now, but the uh, you said the, the road the, the gas tax was a, a user fee and it was fair and everybody understood why it was fair now gas prices are 360 and suddenly it's this big burden 
one. Well, nobody, listen, global inflation is not something we control. What we can do is look for ways to alleviate the burden on people. So, no, no, nobody said there. Nobody said that that uh, people want to, you know, have to want to have to pay taxes. What we did say is that if we want to rebuild our roads and our bridges and our uh, ports and our airports, um, you know, we've got to pay for it somehow. And so, you know, user fees are one way to do that. Um, so that's what a gas tax is. But here we are in a very unusual situation, as frankly, many years of the three years of my uh, governorship, there have been unusual challenges. Um, and I would just say that facing what we think is what about seven percent inflation if we can find ways property taxes and gas taxes and grocery taxes to alleviate the pain that families are experiencing uh, by lowering those taxes uh, in a moment when they need it most we ought to be doing that and the only reason we can do that is because we have a surplus because we've managed our budget well Two yes Stay tuned. We're very close. You know, we, we've I think we've all seen we've been watching the hospitalizations. I would remind people that it's downstate in southern Illinois and central Illinois where we've had the highest numbers of people, at least percentage wise, filling ICU beds and hospital beds. And now that those numbers, excuse me, are coming down, uh, I you know, I think everybody, the doctors in particular, feeling much more comfortable about alleviating the mitigations that people are. Sorry, I, I, Dave hasn't had a chance. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. question another way. Back <laughs> okay. in May, we were out at IDOT, you know, surrounded by all manner of orange equipment. And I said, three bucks is too much for gas. It's like 315 back then. And you said, well, you know, the market fluctuation, we can't control that. And now, almost a year later, you're trying to get a little bit of a control of it. And what has changed in the last uh, nine months where you say, well, now? 7% inflation. I think that's what's changed. Yeah. 7% inflation, remember that for many, many years we had half a percent, 1% inflation. It wasn't really felt much by people across our state, across our nation. All of a sudden we've had 7% inflation. That's happening not just in Illinois, not just in the United States, but globally. And so we, anything we can do to try to alleviate the pain on, on families, we'll do. Thank you, everyone. Thanks Thank you. Thank you.